Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. I know I've been on a hiatus for quite some time, so let's get right back into it. And I've got a little checklist I want to go over. Uh, first thing I want to update you all on is I am set to go to Ceph this week. In fact, a week from now, I will be in Georgia with Carl, and we're going to have a really great time. And the Corsair is nearly ready. So let's go over the list of things that have been done since I've been away. The first thing I want to talk about is the spinner. So the spinner, it's a bit difficult to get a, a prop nut that size, especially since I had you know, a, a, an electric motor on it, and I didn't want to really bother with that. So I ended up making my own 3D printed design. 3D printed it, works great. Uh, I was able to sand it perfectly smooth, and it looks awesome. Uh, also, I <laughs> had a little snafu where I had dropped the fuselage by accident. And by doing that, uh, I found some weak spots in the tail gear. So I went back and reprinted a few parts for that, took out the whole gear plate, reassembled everything, and then reinforced it with carbon fiber toe and CA. The cool thing about carbon fiber toe is it'll wick that CA right through and it hardens right up and it's fantastic. So it's much more robust now and I put some paint on it to blend the black uh, uh, carbon fiber into the white uh, ABS. So that looks great. It's working like a charm and uh, we'll get more into that in a bit. Uh, glass. <laughs> so I was able to take a snow day. <laughs> we, had, we had some unexpected snow and I glassed everything. And of course, filled the weave with my water-based polyurethane and baby powder mix. I mix it to a slurry that's about the consistency of syrup that you would like put on pancakes or waffles or whatever. Uh, so yeah, the glass is done. And then after that, I applied some primer and looked for spots that needed to be further filled and refined. And then after that, I put on a one thirty-second inch wide. Uh, chart pack tape for the panel lines and I use my reference printouts that I have. I have my large format printer printed off some reference lines and did some measurements. Anyway, all of the lines were put on. Uh, that was pretty straightforward. It, I had to <laughs> constantly wait and wait and wait for warmer weather. The weather this year, this spring, has been just flip floppy. You'll have fairly spring-like weather, you know, 40, 50 degrees, but then it'll just swing back into freezing. And really, I don't like to shoot any sort of paint until it's at least 60 degrees. And we've had a couple of those days and I had to plan ahead and look at the weather and monitor those days so that I could take full advantage just to shoot the primer and shoot the primer on the panel lines. And yeah, it was a nightmare. So then after that, I applied literally thousands of rivets. <laughs> Uh, these rivets took a total of nine hours to do and then after I had painted everything I'll get that in a minute but every after I had painted I had to remove the clear coat that was on the uh, the control surfaces and then reapply the panel or the rivets uh, making sure the panel lines were still intact after I had sanded back that clear coat and then repaint and then apply a different clear coat. So yeah, the paint is done. That took a couple of days. Uh, ended up uh, taking off a day of work in order to get that done given the timeline that I had. And I'm sure glad that I did. Um, the paint was applied successfully. I really love the color. But yeah, the clear coat that I had originally intended for didn't really, uh, it wasn't the finish that I wanted. It was a semi-gloss, but it was just too splotchy, and I felt like it was a little too shiny as well. So I ended up using a Rust-Oleum matte coat to seal everything along with the decals and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that went on really quickly. To, I had one day where it was sunny in the afternoon, left it in the sun, cured out in a couple of hours, and it was it was ready to start assembly and, and taking the masking off and putting the canopy on and 
and putting the dummy radial back on and the the prop and making sure the oleos were on. I got the oleos painted and the wheels painted and uh, a whole bunch of other things. So at this point, there's just a couple of things left to do. I did have the airplane out at the field today and the I just wanted to taxi test. I got the battery tray installed so the batteries all fit no problem. The center of gravity is a little far forward of where top flight recommends and everything it went great on the taxi test. Uh, the oleos are working great. The uh, system pressure was working so the mains were very well locked especially on my bumpy runway. And the tail gear held up fantastic as well. I, I really am very pleased with it, despite it being 3D printed. Uh, so again, lots of CA carbon tow help reinforce a lot of that mechanism. A couple of issues I still need to resolve. The uh, main gear doors. The doors uh, bump into the wheels a little bit when they retract, so I just need to adjust my endpoints a little bit there. And uh, the canopy does slide, but it needs a little bit of help. I think I put my holes for the canopy uh, to mount to the rear sliding portion. I think I, I, I drilled those a little too low. So I need to uh, readjust that, and I'm sure it'll work just fine. It was working with three uh, points. Uh, the, once I put the fourth one on, it wasn't working anymore. It kept on binding. So I, I'm sure it's just a clearance issue between the canopy, the rear part of the canopy, and the fuselage. It's just rubbing a little bit. And from there, I need to make and install the oil cooler grill vent intake whatever it's it's just a a piece of ply behind it so it do, it's not functional but the other vent portions that are inboard of that that those are functional they bring air inside of the airplane to help cool the batteries so the bombs are assembled the bomb drop mechanism works the cow flaps work uh the the control surfaces work they're all going the proper direction good deflection and the bad news, like, eh, sort of bad-ish news, she's a porker. Uh, the top flight recommends a maximum flying weight of 9.5 pounds. I'm at 13.2. However, Carl has done some wonderful research and some other examples where the, the airplane has been flying just fine at, at that weight. Obviously, you need some flaps for landing to give you some lift. But uh, I'm pretty sure the fields that are pretty pristine at Americus, Georgia, are going to be a good, good place for me to have a nice, long takeoff, rollout, and a really nice approach on my landing. And I, I really don't see any problems moving forward. Uh, the center of gravity will move a little far aft because uh, two things. After Ceph, I still have yet to finish the tail gear door uh, mechanism and I have to fabricate the doors out of fiberglass so I've got to do that so that's gonna move more weight aft uh, and then there's gonna be uh, the, the cockpit interior which I still have yet to do uh, I still want to animate it and all of that stuff it'll add a little bit of weight but again it'll be a little far aft so we'll see how things go with the maiden flight one last thing I have to do, uh, part of this whole build with the Corsair, it's been a fantastic experience. And obviously, you know I love scratch building, but uh, you know, these projects are very involved. They're very long and they are costly. And I definitely want to give another shout out and thank you to number one, Grayson Hobby for supplying the motor as well as the speed controller. And I also want to thank Flight Test for supplying the run cam mini split that is mounted in the cockpit. Really hope to have some good in-flight footage for you guys on my next video update of the Maiden. So stay tuned and look forward for that. Uh, but systems are go. Things look good. Uh, I'm ready to start packing for Seth. Thanks so much for the update, guys. And uh, maybe expect a little live stream action on YouTube. So make sure you hit that subscribe and the notification bell so that you know when I'm going live at Seth. There's going to be a lot of great stuff there between... Damon Atwood, John Morgan, a whole bunch of other really great modelers out there and really look forward to meeting them, seeing their machines and talking shop with them, making new memories and friendships. It's going to be a wonderful time. So stay tuned and uh, maybe we'll get even a little bit of road trip action in too. Depends on how tired Carl and I are, uh, but it's, it's going to be fun. So thanks again. I'm Joshua Orchard.